So one really important experience for babies who are, are developing a spoken language is hearing their own vocal output. Right? This, in fact, motivates them to continue to vocalize, right? Like when you can hear, when you get a feedback, basically, from something you've done, it encourages you to do it more. And also what's really important is calibration, right? So if you're trying to fine tune these sounds that you're producing to sound right, well, you need to be able to hear them so that you actually can make your, your vocal apparatus do the right thing. And so uh, there's a strong link in early word forms because infants tend to use the sounds that they've babbled in their first words that they've heard repeated in their early word forms rather than the sounds that are most common in the speech that adults use with them, right? So it's the infants who are sort of deriving which sounds they produce in their early words based on the sounds they babbled, which they themselves heard, right? And the absence of auditory feedback may actually explain why deaf infants who clearly, you know, are, can't hear but actually still babble, right? They still have the vocal apparatus, they just can't hear what they produce. So this absence of auditory feedback may explain why deaf infants actually produce less elaborate vocal play than hearing infants and reach the canonical, the more uh, sophisticated babbling stage later, right? They still reach it, but they just reach it later, right? Because you're, you're handicapped, you can't hear your own output. So in order to, uh, you know, it's not very rewarding because you can't hear what you're doing. So you don't get that that uh, response of, ah, I've done something and I can hear what I've done and I can, you know, change it based on what I'm doing. If you're deaf, unfortunately, you can't hear this auditory feedback. So that means that when it comes to the spoken language, you're gonna, just gonna be behind because of not being able to hear your own vocal output. And so uh, it turns out in many, some cases, infants with profound hearing loss uh, will be given cochlear implants by their parents in, in some cases to help correct their hearing. Uh, be, and this actually happened to, to my brother, not with the cochlear implant, but he had to have, a, he did, that wasn't around when he was uh, younger, but uh, he had to have his hearing corrected because he couldn't hear for the first eight months of his life, right? So um, in his case, his hearing was corrected and then he caught up just like infants who get cochlear implants now can catch up to the vocalization levels of their peers who have been hearing the entire time. So among other things, infants with cochlear implants are able to reach the canonical, that more sophisticated babbling stage with the reduplicated sounds. Uh, just like their hearing peers, right? So as long as you get there early enough, then you can have these kids catch up and not be too far behind in the acquisition of a spoken language, right? Because again, all this about hearing the auditory output is about the acquisition of spoken languages, which of course require you to use the auditory modality.